We spoke previously about the different measurements we can take with gases. We talked about volume, temperature, amount, and pressure. We talked about what variables we would use for those in a mathematical equation, and we talked about the units we would use when taking those measurements. We saw in the lab activity how these various measurements can relate to each other. I want to start with one of those relationships. This relationship was credited to Robert Boyle, and so we call it Boyle's Law. And this is the relationship we looked at in that lab activity. What Boyle did is he studied the relationship between pressure and volume. Now, there are four things you can measure in a gas pressure, volume, amount, and temperature. If you're specifically looking at the relationship between pressure and volume, you want to make sure there are no other variables that are going to interfere with your measurements. In other words, if you're looking at pressure and volume, you have to make sure the other two measurements, amount and temperature, are held constant. What Boyle discovered when he found the relationship between pressure and volume is that pressure and volume are inversely proportional. This is just a geeky way to say as one goes up, the other goes down. And hopefully this is the relationship you found in that lab activity. As you increased the pressure, the volume went down. As you decrease the pressure, the volume goes up. And hopefully this makes sense in terms of kinetic molecular theory. We said that pressure is caused by the collisions of particles. And we said that pressure is a measure of force over unit area. So as you decrease the volume of something, you're decreasing the amount of area that the particles can collide with. If you're decreasing the area, you would be increasing the pressure. So hopefully, Boyle's law intuitively makes sense. Practically, you know this because if you take a balloon and you squeeze it, you're going to decrease the volume of the balloon. And if you squeeze it hard enough, the pressure will increase so much that the balloon will burst. So let's take a look at the math now. A mathematician would say that pressure is proportional to the inverse of volume, or 1 over volume. So that little fish symbol is a proportionality symbol if you haven't seen it before. Now if you don't like the proportionality symbol, you can get rid of it. You can make it an equal sign. But in order to make that an equal sign, you have to introduce a constant. So we can write this equation to say that pressure equals a constant. And I'm going to call this constant K1. It's called K1 because we're going to see several constants coming up. So pressure is going to equal a constant divided by volume. Well, if K1 is going to stay constant, I think you see the inverse proportionality. If you make volume bigger, then pressure must get smaller in order to maintain that equal sign. Likewise, if you make pressure bigger, the volume has to get smaller. So that's the mathematical statement of Boyle's Law. It becomes more useful if you put your variables on one side and the constant on the other. You could say that P times V equals a constant. And again, I hope you see the inverse proportionality there. If K is going to remain constant, if P goes up, V has to go down. And likewise, if P goes down, the V has to go up. And if P times V equals a constant, then P times V will always equal this constant. So you can write this same equation a fourth way and say P times V under some initial conditions, P1, V1, will equal P times V under some final conditions, P2, V2. And this is probably the most useful way to write Boyle's Law, even though all four equations on this screen say the exact same thing. Let's give it a try. Here's our statement of Boyle's Law. And this is what a problem would look like. Let's say I have a sample of argon, and I know that that sample of argon has a pressure of 1.6 atmospheres and a volume of 12.3 liters in a sealed container at constant temperature. So let's focus on those words. Sealed container, meaning gas can't get in or can't get out, which means that the amount of gas is held constant, which was one of our conditions for Boyle's Law, and at a constant temperature, which was another condition for Boyle's Law. 
the volume is increased to 34.7 liters. I want to know what the new pressure inside that container will be. So we'll call this question one. Now before we even get into the math, intuitively hopefully we have an idea of what's going to happen. The volume has gone from 12.3 liters to 34.7 liters, so I've increased the volume. If this is an inverse proportionality, we should expect the pressure to go down. Let's find out. Boyle says P1V1 equals P2V2. And the question is asking what is the new pressure? So we're going to solve for P2. So I like to do the algebra first. I'm going to say P2 equals P1V1 all over V2. All I did was just divide both sides by V2 to isolate my unknown. So I can plug in my data here. I can say P2 equals P1. Well, the initial pressure is 1.06 atmospheres times V1, which is 12.3 liters. And I'm going to divide that by V2, which is 34.7 liters. My liters cancel out, and I'm left with the atmospheres, which is good because I'm trying to find a pressure. So P2 equals 0 0.376 atmospheres. And as we predicted, by increasing the volume, we've decreased the pressure. The pressure went from 1.06 atmospheres to 0.376 atmospheres.